Good morning, and it's great to have you. Let's start with uh, Web3, the idea that the next phase of the Internet is going to be decentralized. Uh, there has been such open public debates, dispute over this. You've got Jack Dorsey, Boxio, Aaron Levy, even uh, the CEO of Airbnb, Brian Chesky, getting into it last night versus basically Andreessen Horowitz. Why is this topic <laughs> so divisive? Explain that to us in your own words. Yeah, look, I mean, the, the entire history of the Internet has been a debate about centralization and decentralization. Both have merits, both have values. Um, you know, it's not like this time we're going to resolve it. Um, and it's also not like this time there's one answer. There's going to be centralized components. There's going to be decentralized components. And what it really comes down to is what creates better experiences for users that are more trustable, um, that are going to create longer term value. As we move to a world where, you know, especially as COVID drags on, people take their digital lives and their digital identities just as seriously as the physical world. Right. So if we believe, as I think many of us do, that we're seeing a, a future of many universes that people care a lot about and spend a lot of time and a lot of their lives living in, inhabiting in, working, you know, whether that's centralized or decentralized. I mean, on one hand, it's a huge deal, so it's worth a lot of discussion. But on the other hand, it's kind of like, let's play that record one more time on which way this goes. Yeah. Now, a lot of the trends are, are very long term. And I guess the idea is that the platforms that are, are mega trillion dollar companies now, like Meta and um, Google and Amazon, that they will eventually be displaced. Uh, what kind of do you think that that is sort of a risk factor for these companies? Do you think that as we see crypto and Web3 companies become more mainstream, that this is ultimately where the Internet will be going? I mean, I think it depends how you define Web3. In the end of the day, again, I think whether or not this is a threat to the big companies or an opportunity for them, I mean, the answer is it's both. Um, we are going to see the winds of change coming. You know, there's a lot of really interesting new technologies and opportunities. I mean, the idea that people now feel like owning digital assets can be a major part of their lives, their wealth and their portfolio is a new deal that's very interesting and I think is very mainstream at this point. The idea that we're going to want immersive experiences where you'll truly live online, at least sub-segments of the population, again, the depth of that is new and important. Um, now, whether the biggest technology players in the world with the best engineers, the most of them, et cetera, get to play a very central role in that, or whether they play a partial role, I think this is you know a multi-trillion dollar question. So again, it's right to be focused on, but I think saying Web3 and crypto is a, you know, the, the death knell for the big technology companies, I think is a little bit myopic. I think the question is, it's a huge opportunity. And if they miss the big turns, they might miss a huge amount of upside. But it's hard to imagine them going away, um, <laughs> you know, just as a lot of traditional companies have done very well, despite the fact they're not Internet companies.